I'd like to invite our next, uh, next presenter uh, on Simple G in the Classroom. So we're gonna take a little bit of a, of a pivot and, uh, oh, it's okay. Uh, so it's gonna be Tom Hurdle presenting. Great, real pleasure to be here. Um, I guys doing amazing things and um, I'll talk a bit about um, a piece that we've been plugging into iGUIDE and um, uh, some experiences in the classroom, um, graduate teaching, interdisciplinary teaching, as well as professionals. So co-authors on this, Elizabeth Frace, a PhD student at Purdue, Iman Hakiki, um, a senior economist at Purdue, and San Wang also here. So Iman and San are here, San's a postdoc, and, um, and they've been closely involved in this. Just a little bit of an outline. Uh, Simple G is being used in the Convergence Catalyst part of this uh, iGUIDE project, so I want to talk to you about bringing that into the classroom, and um, particularly in the context of interdisciplinary teaching, and I'll also touch on the iGUIDE Summer School. We'll be hearing from uh, one of those groups in the next session. Um, so we've seen the Sustainable Development Goal diagram here. Um, this course is particularly interested in those portion, uh, that portion of the sustainable development goals that relate to land and water resources, and that's uh, about half of them. Um, I have found over the years, this cartoon is actually from about a decade ago, but I think it's still relevant to some degree. It's, it is still hard to get many scientists to bridge these disciplines. Maybe it's particularly the economists, speaking as an economist, Many of my colleagues don't seem to be able to find Clematia over there and uh, come across the shark-invested waters, but um, <clears throat> I find that many of our best students coming into the grad program, they're super enthused about interdisciplinary work and tackling these challenges. And then we railroad them in their curriculum, and um, it's kind of frustrating for them and uh, ends up constraining them. So. Um, I find in this course I'll talk about uh, the students um, are, are pretty excited to uh, have some of those constraints relaxed. Uh, the overall theme of simple, the Simple G framework and our piece of iGUIDE is global to local to global analysis. So the theme, the idea is you need this multi-scale approach. Um, we've heard some about it already this morning. Uh, that all these sustainability issues are inherently local. They depend on the local soils, the local community governance, the water, et cetera, the, uh, the climate. Um, so you can't address sustainability without becoming local. But if you ignore the global context, uh, that community could go off in a direction that wouldn't be feasible in the future. World's going this way, they're going this way. So providing that global context is important and also we found increasingly as we've looked at these different issues in this lens, we find there's feedback from the local sustainability solutions back to the regional and global context. This is a, a diagram I was so happy to see Nick present this earlier this morning. It just shows the, this is being adopted. This convergence catalyst approach is being adopted by people outside Purdue, by people outside of economics, and that's very cool. It just shows the broad framework that there's demand and supply. So economic, economic thinking behind that. And in the middle, uh, you have this uh, possibility, uh, the simple model doesn't have that, the simple G does, this possibility to have the geospatial aspect, to have gridded um, <coughs> production, gridded resource use, um, showing the, uh, the variation that one sees across space. So that's the framework. Um, there's a textbook for this class that was published a couple years ago, and here are the topics we, we were addressing this spring. So we start with planetary boundaries, we go into things about productivity growth and potential for cropland expansion in different places, water quantity, also water quality, um, globalization's an important topic, and of course consumers who drive this whole system. And there are a number of other elements here, including nutrition and food security, the climate change. 
Um, the format for this lecture, it's a two, two day a week, Tuesday, Thursday um, <clears throat> class. So Tuesday is lecture day. So we bring in, you'll see in a minute, a um, the photos of all the guest speakers we've had in this class to date. So there are a lot of them, and they're specialists in different, many different areas. So the main thing is they're a top scientist in their area. They're given 45 minutes to talk about their passion. And then, <clears throat> um, and there are two background readings from interdisciplinary journals. Students post questions in advance, and one or two students, depending on the situation, organize all of those questions into a discussion that takes place then in the remaining 30 minutes. That seems to be a great way to um, get everyone engaged but um, keep things moving. So that's Tuesday. We'll be addressing whatever the topic of the week, as I showed you uh, in the previous slide. Um, could be population, it could be planetary boundaries, it could be agricultural productivity. Um, then on Thursday's lab day, roll up your sleeves, get into the, um, the model, and see how this, um, the, the, uh, this problem can be addressed in the simple context. There are a series of lab assignments in the first half of the semester that build their skills. Starts from the simplest possible thing, thinking about population growing around the world, and then bring in further elements of this. So by the time we're at mid-semester, they're already chafing at the bit to get into their problem, the thing that they brought to class they want to address. So they begin working the second half of the um, semester on their project and present that at the end of the semester. Um, here are just some of the guest lectures we've had, hugely diverse group, um, many different backgrounds. Um, it's been an absolute delight for me <laughs> to um, have these people in the classroom and each time learn from them, broaden my horizons, and the students have been very excited to have leading intellectuals now from around the world. Um, this started out only being people from Purdue, and then the pandemic blew that, the doors off of that. We started going remote, and now we have speakers from all over the world. <clears throat> Uh, the students bring these very diverse interests. So they come from the College of Agriculture, Engineering, Liberal Arts, Management, Technology, Sciences, and the diversity of projects they consider reflect this. I've just, as a partial list here, of course, there are always those who want to, cons you know, what, what if we eat less meat? You know, what's that going to do to the system? Very important question. Um, uh, those who look at water pollution, Women empowerment, I hadn't thought of that problem until someone came in passionate about that topic and found all the different places in this system where women empowerment will change the dynamics. It's not just demography, um, it's access to credit, it's productivity, many other things. So I, I, I always learn something every time I teach this. Um, virtual water trade's a big topic, um, cropland loss to urbanization, et cetera, and climate impacts, of course. Um, so teaching does fuel research. That's the one thing I like a lot about this class. Um, seven, six, seven years ago, I was teaching, and uh, the fellow down there, Jonathan Buzan, who's a climate scientist working with uh, my colleague, uh, at the time he was a PhD student working with my colleague, Matt Huber, raised his hand and said, we were talking about climate, well, what about the impact? You're talking about crops. What about the people? What about heat stress? So we began working on that, and uh, we're now, I think I'm now on my third PhD student out of Matt's group. And um, here's an article that came out in Environmental Research Letters. Um, Jonathan inspired that, looking at um, how um, future um, <clears throat> high humidity, high temperature combination will affect productivity in agriculture and how that will affect, in this case, aggregate welfare in these regions. We've also looked at poverty. Uh, you can see in Sub-Saharan Africa, actually, um, the impact of heat stress on people is more important in the aggregate than the impact on the plants. So we were ignoring a big part of the problem until this young whippersnapper came along and said, <laughs> you're missing an important part of it. So that's a wonderful thing about the class. Elizabeth has surveyed students just this last year in conjunction with this 
um, <laughs> I guide effort to ask um, what skills and knowledge did you gain from this course that you value that you think are transferable to other disciplines. So economic modeling appears there. Interdisciplinary thinking. Um, a lot of the students come in to this, as I say, they've been channeled in a fairly narrow way. This opens their mind to a broader way of thinking and they often come out of this with um, a thesis topic, as was the case with Jonathan and the economic impacts of heat stress. And critical thinking they seem to value as well. So um, this is branching out other offerings. It was super exciting. Um, Zan Wang, uh, with support from Iman Hagigi, offered this in the iGUIDE Summer School. Um, and they were using the Jupyter Notebook we heard about earlier on, um, on the GeoHub, so that was very exciting. So that, that's the in the cloud part of this talk. In the classroom, in the cloud, that offers um, many, many possibilities now. Um, so they had, within a limited time, they developed um, a very interesting analysis of the, you know, the heat stress issue. We'll hear more about it later on. My understanding is, I wasn't there unfortunately, but they won the People's Choice Award. So there was, a, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, and um, Zan notes that this was a good way of conveying economic theory through figures, not just lecturing. Um, by working with a toy model, they were able to um, uh, make some advances and, and e generate um, workflows that were written in R. Another offering that's of interest to the, maybe to the geographers here, I've been constantly trying to promote this class, other people to teach this class elsewhere, and um, maybe some of you will pick me up on that uh, because uh, we will be happy to provide you all the background material necessary to do this. Um, a, uh, a, a fellow I know from the Global Land Program, Professor Daniel Müller at the uh, Humboldt University of Berlin has picked this up and he uses it in a geography course, a couple of the lab assignments. He has a very interesting quote, Elizabeth interviewed him in this context and uh, he says, the essence of the land use dilemma boils down to economics. So that's something for a geographer to say. Prices, elasticity, these concepts geographers have not really heard of and cannot use yet. They need uh, to master them. So. Um, uh, there's, there's great potential, I think, beyond um, you know, our, our discipline. Um, and uh, we'll be offering a simple G course um, in April, May of next year, and we want to uh, get more people from iGUIDE involved in that. Here are some pictures from previous courses, and this one will be facilita greatly facilitated by these new developments, the Jupyter Notebook and other things that iGUIDE has created. So there's a nice synergy here, Simple G uh, developing within um, iGUIDE. So I think that's the last of my talk. Yeah.